Amen. I wanna welcome all of our locations, everybody joining us online. Come on, church, let's put our hands together. <laughs> Say hello to our whole family. So grateful, so grateful you're here. We've been in this collection of talks. That's what a series is if you're new to church. It's kind of a collection of talks around the same idea, and we're in this series called Built to Last, and we're talking about how to build relationships that go the distance, and uh, I think we all need to do that, and we have relationships. Everything in life is, happens around relationships, right? You've got friendships, you've got working relationships, you've got parent-child relationships, you've got um, it's complicated relationships, you've got marriage relationships, you've got dating. I mean, just everywhere you turn, you're relating to somebody else, and you've got to learn how to relate well if you want to be successful in life. I would propose to you that your ability to do relationships well will determine how far you go in your career. Your ability to do relationships well will determine how successful your marriage is. Your, relationship, your ability to do relationships well will determine how well your parenting relationships are once they're out of the house. Like every area of life, we have to learn to relate well. Last week we started with, if you missed it, you should go back and watch about building blocks of good relationships. And we just looked at what Paul told us in the New Testament. And he talks about humble and gentle, patient and unity. Humble and gentle, patient and unity. I actually had someone give a, a testimony this week, a story back. We call them stories now. Back in the day, we called them, somebody had a testimony. Come on, somebody. Um, God's testing is creating a testimony. <laughs> That'll preach. Anyways, and so <laughs> gave a story, said that they were going into a conversation with someone in their family and that it always, this, this topic, it always created tension and created rub in their life. And they went in and they just said to themselves, humble and gentle, humble and gentle. And it changed the conversation. And the person on the receiving end said, you're handling this different, like, it's so changed that they noticed they were handling it different. Come on, I'm just telling you, God's word works when you do it God's way. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Hey, how many of you know there's nothing better in the fall than a fire pit? Yeah. Unless you're watching from Florida, I can't imagine that's fun. <laughs> hey, it's hot and humid, let's build a fire outside. Um, but if you're in our area, in this region of Virginia, there's nothing better than a fire pit in the fall. I, I like an outdoor fireplace, but a fire pit will do. Because with a fire pit, you smell like smoke. You got to shower. You got to change clothes before you go to bed. Any, anybody? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, never mind. But I, um, I know that there's some things that, about a fire pit that, um, and fires. I'm not, a, I'm not a big fire guy. Not a, not a major outdoor guy. I'm, you know, I've, I've been camping, but also I like um, the Ritz as well. <laughs> Better. Anybody with me? Here's what I here's what I do know is that um, it helps if you start with some uh, some paper and Giants got um, shrimp for five ninety nine a pound. Just if hey, just a little free extra there for you if you need it. So you put a little paper in there, and some of you like real fire builders are like, well, actually, you don't start with paper. Just keep that to yourself. Um, and then it helps if you have a little bit of kindling, like kindling, you know, I grew up in Tennessee. My dad would say, um, he would say whenever I was a kid that you gotta have fat lighter. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but evidently it's some kind of wood that has sap in it or something, I don't know, that builds it, I don't know what it was. I just know that's what dad would tell me. And then you put logs. I've already got a little wood in there. That's called kindling. Y'all, we're putting logs on the fire. Are you with me? And, um, and then you can, and I'm sure you that know, really know how to build a fire, see, I would burn the house down. Are like, are like actually, you've, you've got to get this so the air flows through and all that. I'll just be real honest, real transparent with you. I usually buy that log that has the piece of paper on it, and you stick it in there. Come on, anybody else? And if that doesn't work, I stand back with lighter fluid that you put on charcoal, and I just squirt a whole lot of that on it until one of my buddies knows how, shows me how to light the fire. Y'all, some of you, I gained respect. Some of you, I lost respect right there. Here's what I do know about fire is that it has all kinds of benefits. Does it not? Come on, it has some benefits. How many know there's nothing like a good s'more? And if I wasn't disciplined in eating right now, I'd have one. You can cook a little s'more on it. A little, come on, you can. How many of you know that if you really love Jesus, you put the graham cracker on the edge of the fire pit, then 
you put the chocolate on it and you let it get a little bit soft. I just set some of y'all free. You going home tonight. That was worth the price of admission right there. You gotta put it on the edge of the fire because then the chocolate melts and you have a better s'more. You can, you can warm yourself when you're really cold. You can, um, you can cook over it. I've, I've even seen pictures and in Instagram videos of people like with a skillet. I don't know why when you got a kitchen you need to do all this, but <laughs> I just, I turn a knob and the, the flame comes on. You can stare at it. After, after a long day, you just need something that is mind-numbing. Come on. Anybody ever just sit there? Some of you are like, what are you thinking? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. I'm just staring at it. I love staring at a fire and not thinking about anything. <laughs> it can keep animals away, right? But, but here's what I also know is that the same fire that can warm you, you can cook over it, you can stare at it for hours, can burn down a building. The same fire that can have so many benefits at the same time can be so damaging. And I was thinking about this as it relates to relationships, how that isn't that the same is true. That relationships on one hand can be so beneficial and so warming to your life, and they can give you strength and encouragement. And, and how many of you know that, that it's, it's maybe a relationship that just said the right thing at the right time, someone you were in re relationship with that just strengthened you and built you and encouraged you, but at the same time, on the other side of the coin, relationships can be the very thing that like burn you yeah. and leave you with pain and, and leave you hurt and with feeling like there's shrapnel in parts of your life. And, and I would propose that this is especially true as it comes to romantic relationships. That they can be so amazing on one hand and they can be damaging on the other hand. That they can fill our heart and break our heart. That they can speak life into us and they can suck the life out of us. When it comes to romantic relationships and and it's the same thing with fire. Fire is amazing, watch this, when it's built in the right order and it's placed in the right boundary. This is what I wanna to propose to you today. And, and, and you can take it or leave it, but I would encourage you to at least consider it, that when the fire is built in the right order, it actually lasts, <laughs> unlike mine, that usually when that log goes out, it's over. I'm like, kids, you got about five minutes. Cook fast. When it's built in the right order and it's placed in the right boundary, it's an amazing thing. But if I were to take this out of the boundary, it could destroy this entire building. And relationships are the same. If they're built in the right order and they're placed in the right boundary, built in the right order, placed in the right boundary, then they can be amazing things. And so that's what I wanna to talk to you today about, is that just maybe, maybe we should do relationships God's way, and does he have an order, and does he have a boundary? And that just maybe if we lived within that boundary and built them within that order, that maybe they would be the life-giving, fulfilling kind of things that we all desire, I believe, deep in our hearts. The Bible says this in Proverbs, I love this verse, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Everybody shout all. All, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understandings. In all your ways, obey him. In all your ways, obey him. Then he will make your path smooth and straight. In all your ways. So God, I'm gonna trust in you in all my ways. I'm gonna trust that your way is the best way. And then not only am I gonna trust that, but I'm gonna take the step of obeying your ways. All, in all my ways, I'm gonna obey him. Does that mean that God has some idea about relationships? Well, I would say the guy that created it probably has some ideas about how it best operates. And so I'm gonna, God, I'm gonna trust that your word is right, but I'm actually gonna obey your word in my relationships, in my finances, in my career, in fill in the blank. I'm gonna obey you in all, somebody shout all, all. in all my ways. 
But if we're gonna do that, that means that we've gotta think about relationships the God, way God thinks about relationships. If you're with me, say amen. amen. I love this passage in the book of Romans. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. And watch this, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. You wanna know God's will for your relationships? Well, then be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And here's what we know about his will. It's good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. Let me say that again. I want you to understand this because I think some of us think, well, in, in the area of my relationships, God's will for my relationships is for me to be like, you know, an old maid having no fun and just going through like, oh, I just gotta bear it. No, no, no. God's will is good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. Listen to me, it's good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect, but to get that, I can't be conformed to the patterns of this world. I've gotta allow my mind to be transformed by renewing it with God's word. Because this, listen to me, write this down. Your thinking is what drives your living. Your thinking drives your living. Where you are right now is a direct result of your thoughts. Where you are financially is directly a, a result of how you think about finances. Where you are relationally is a direct result of how you think about relationships. Where you are in your marriage, are you following me, is a direct result about how you think about your relationships. And all kinds of stuff informs our thinking. Our experiences, our past, our friends, our family, all kinds of things informs our thinking and where you are right now is a direct result of your thinking. And if you don't like where you are and you don't like what you've experienced, change your thinking. Don't be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But what happens to us is so many of us, we get conformed to the patterns of this world. It doesn't mean that we're awful, evil people. There's just patterns in this world. There's a pattern in this world that says love will fix it all. It's a popular thought. You see it in movies. You see it everywhere you go. Well, if we just love each other enough, it'll fix it. If I could just have that feeling. I'm not downgrading the power of love. I'm just saying like, Maybe that's not the solution. Maybe, there's, maybe love isn't a feeling. Maybe love is sacrifice. Maybe love is kindness. Maybe love is patience. Are y'all failing? Maybe love isn't this good. And then whenever the love goes, it's like, you lost that love and feeling. Whoa, that, all right. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the bar with Goose and Maverick and... Or are we, are we, we think, well, marriage is the solution. Well, I'm gonna, if we just get married, it'll fix it all. That'll be the fix. Like, that'll just cure it. We get married, we, 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 right, we'll just, we'll figure it out. We're building this plane in the air. We'll just figure it out when we, and it's like, no, no, maybe marriage doesn't fix it. Maybe marriage only magnifies the dysfunctions and the issues that are already there. And so maybe this thought of we'll just get married and that'll fix it all, maybe that's not the way. Maybe the pattern of this world that just goes, well, honey, just stay with him. He's got potential. <laughs> maybe that's not a good bedrock for dating somebody. Are y'all with me? Uh, hello, are y'all with me today? Like you parents should be amening me a whole lot more than you are right now. Like maybe, maybe, maybe potential isn't the greatest thing to, to go all, every, every guy that's dating somebody right now is like a little nervous. Like, where's he going with this? We may have to get out of here before he ends this thing. I don't know where he's gonna go with this deal. Maybe, maybe we should do it in the right order, put it in the right boundaries. Just maybe God's way is the best way Maybe Hans isn't gonna come get you, the beast isn't gonna change, and Ariel never grows legs. Come on. Are y'all with me? Yes. I love what the Bible says in Matthew. It says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes, and the relational stress comes, and the tensions come, 
and the job loss comes and the disappointment comes and the offense comes, it won't collapse because it was built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it, I love this, God gave us a will. He's like, you can obey it or not obey it. I'm just gonna tell you how it's gonna end. Anyone who doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. And when the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it'll collapse like a mighty crash. This is what we all want to avoid. This is what we all want to avoid. And so I wanna give you quickly what I believe is a great order that creates a great boundary that will help you have successful relationships because relationships built in the right order and placed in the right boundary are an amazing gift from God. Now, I wanna give you a disclaimer. What I'm gonna teach you is gonna go completely against culture, um, completely against what your bro thinks you ought to do. <laughs> Maybe completely against what has been modeled before you in some areas of your life, but also let you know it works. It works. If you're with me, say amen. The Bible says this, it says we're to commit to the Lord whatever we do and our plans will succeed. Commit to the Lord whatever we do. So the, the, the bedrock, the ground, the, the foundational piece of it is this. If we're gonna build relationships in the right order, and we're gonna keep them in the right boundary, then, then we're gonna start number one with this, is with spiritual. It begins spiritual. If you're with me, say Amen. I gave you the warning, all right? I, I didn't think this would be a great amen sermon. Like, but I'm just telling you, this, this is how you keep from burning your house down. This is how you keep going from one relationship to another and you're like in pain and you're hurt and you're dealing with the scars of it. And man, there's grace. Like God is so good and so merciful and there's grace. But I'm just, I don't want you to have to live on grace. I want you to live on like, no, nah, I, 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 I took the right steps or, or, or I started over. God gave me a brand new beginning. Then I took the right, are y'all with me? Like there's grace for it. So don't hear condemnation. That'll be the voice of the enemy, not the voice of your pastor or the voice of your God. That'll be the voice of the enemy. But I just want you to know it starts with spiritual. The foundation has got to start with, with no, we are on the, we're on the same page when it comes to Jesus. Are you with me? Like it is spirit. It's not emotional. It's not like you like this. I like that. I think I'm in love. No, no. Like it's, it's like where you like first meeting, first coffee day, where are you at with Jesus? Are y'all with me? I know this is old school and I know this ain't like, but where are you at? Bubba, where are you with Jesus? Like, what dream team are you on? How long you been tithing? Like, what small group are you a part of? Where's your accountability? Are y'all following me? Like, this gonna be, girl, where are you? Like, who, who you got around? Are y'all following? Like, Jesus is the foundation. Faith, Owen and Faith and I have, and Tammy, we have a lot of relationship conversations because I know the, the, the greatest influence in people's lives are the people that are around them. You are the average of your five closest friends. And so knowing that, I talk to them a lot about relationships and influence and who's around them. And Faith and I especially have a lot of, my baby girl, I just pray a lot and like, dear God, help me. And, um, and, and, and I keep guns in the house. So I, between Jesus and all that, I figure we got, you know, do all you can do and then pray all you can. That's my, my value. So, but we have a whole lot of conversations and I'm often asked her, I'm like, all right, when the time comes, eons into the future that someone wants to date you. What's the first question? And uh, she'll go, I know, Dad. And I'll be like, no, what's the first question? Where do we start this thing at? She was like, do they love God? And I was like, nope, not enough. <laughs> and she goes, I know what you want me to say. I'm like, no, no, no. Saying I love God is one thing. Living out I love God <laughs> is another thing. Are you following me? I'm not, I'm not just... I'm not just talking about like, could I tell you that I go to that church, you know, like the guy I met in the gym who was, I was like, oh, I found out I was a pastor. And then everybody wants to tell you where they go to church. He's like, oh yeah, I go to church. And, and I was like, oh, what's the name of it? He's like, it's that, um, uh, it's, <laughs> he had no idea where he went to church. <laughs> 
I'm just not saying like that. I'm saying like there's some evidence in the life of the, the walk is following the talk. The, are y'all following me? Like there's some evidence in the life. Like, yes, I am. I do serve. Yes, I am reading my Bible. Yes, I, I, I know. I know. I told you. I gave you the disclaimer. It's going to go completely against like, but th- you want to build it right, right order, right boundary, more opportunity for success. Commit your ways to the Lord. So it begins spiritual. It begins with the spiritual. Well, pastor, what if I'm dating somebody right now and we don't have that in common? Are y'all following me? Like you really need to stop and consider that and think through that. You really like hit like, like time out, like pause button. Are y'all following me? Right? And don't go and be like, my pastor told me to break up with you. <laughs> I've had that happen before, and we have to give those names to our security teams, then they want to follow me, and it ends badly, y'all. Some of you are like, but I'm already married, and it didn't start that way. And I would just say, and you're like, I'm just, I'm praying for my spouse. I'm praying, they won't come. I, you bring this then. Don't discount the value that you bring. Don't discount your prayers. Don't discount your witness. Don't discount your faithfulness to God. You bring it, and it's powerful. Don't discount it. I don't don't have a verse for you on this next one, but I I believe this builds it. I believe these are biblical principles. I believe this is years of watching this. Are you with me? I know spiritual is the foundation. I would suggest second that you build is on values. Like, pastor, you're setting a standard really high. Aren't you worth it? Amen. Yes, yes. Young lady, aren't you worth it? Aren't you worth setting a standard high? Well, I don't know if I ever find anybody. God will bring them along. Here's what I mean by values is like, if you really value family, you need to know that who you're interested in really values family. Because if not, it's gonna be a rub when you're like, no, I wanna spend all Thanksgiving week with them. I love family. We wanna play cards till two in the morning. Like we wanna sit around the fire pit and talk for forever. I love family. And he's like, I don't really wanna hang out with your family. You're, you're, you're setting yourself up for a fight. Are you with me? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Maybe you value generosity and they don't value generosity. And so you're both earning incomes and it's like, no, I wanna be able to give to that and give to this. I wanna help that person. And so-and-so, you know, they need, they need, they need help. I want to go on that Saturday and help them move because they they need some help. And there's not a common value of generosity. Are you following me? I'm just, whatever the value is for you, you got to figure out what are those things that I value? And those got to be like, it helps you build the right foundation, right order, right boundaries. It'll help you have success in your relationship. Number three, are you with me? Say amen. amen. Number three, I would say is then interest. Here's the deal though. This is where most of us enter the relationship. I meet somebody. You're a foodie, I'm a foodie. I'm in love. <laughs> right? Like, we got, we got similar interests. I mean, isn't that like, somebody will go, tell, tell me am I not telling the truth. Like, a friend will go, I met somebody and, uh, and, and we have a lot of, a lot of things in common. I have a lot of similar interest. And that's great, like that's helpful. But it's not the starting point. Because if this is the starting point, it'll never uphold the weight of the other things that relationships bring with them. Because the foundation doesn't have the base that it needs to have in the thing that is most important in your life, which is your spiritual life. And so interest is great, it's just not the starting point. Are you with me? And then after interest, then 
it's safe to begin to go, okay, I'm gonna open up emotionally. But many of us, we don't start at interest, we start at emotional. I mean, it's straight like, she's hot, I'm in love. <laughs> Whoa, how did we get like, how did we get there so fast? How did we get to the emotion so fast? And I understand it's challenging. I understand like, like reining that in takes a level of discipline and, and I would add the help of the Holy Spirit, but if you wanna build it wisely, right? Those who obey my teachings are wise. They're like people that build their house on a firm foundation of a rock and when the storms come, it doesn't get blown around. Let me tell you, your emotions can change like the wind. And if it starts there, it will not uphold the weight of the relationship. If we build it in the right order and we build it in the right boundaries, then we have a much better chance of success. If we build it in the right order, we build it in the right boundaries. Are you with me? And when we start with emotion, what ends up happening is we don't usually end up with love. We end up with infatuation. Infatuation wants it fast. Love wants it slow and steady and can, are you following me? There's a difference in the two. Infatuation is that thing inside of you that's like, you know, I don't know what it is today. Like, I guess you text till two in the morning. I don't know. I'm old, y'all. I don't know. Maybe you Snapchat. When I was young, it was like, you still on the phone? Come on. What was that song I was singing to you? Oh, and we dance out there on that empty hardwood floor. The chairs up and the lights turn way down low. The music played, we held each other close. And we dance. <laughs> I was in Lynchburg, you were in Appomattox. Be on the phone until 12 in the morning singing Brad Paisley. <laughs> Come on, lots changed. Come on, I'll go real old school. Some of you remember getting the cord, going to another room, closing the door. Because <laughs> you, you had to get away from everybody. You were clotheslining the rest of your family. They didn't know you were on the phone, <laughs> trying to walk through the kitchen like, whoa, somebody took my neck off. That infatuation feeling, make you want to sneak out with your parents' car in the middle of the night. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm not condoning that. But it's not a great starting point. It's great after you've built some things. It's not a great starting point. And finally, we move to physical. And somewhere in here we get married, y'all. I know, I know, I know it's old school, it's like, but it's God's way. It's God's way, and if we build it in the right order, we save ourselves a whole lot of heartache, we save ourselves a whole lot of pain, save ourselves a whole lot of betrayal, confusion, hurt. Save ourselves a whole lot of now I don't know if I can trust you because I couldn't trust them. And all the baggage that comes along with not right order, not right boundary. Because when I begin to build it out of order and out of boundary, what was meant by God to be this amazing, life giving, fulfilling, refreshing thing. Now I begin to take logs off the fire and out of the boundary, this thing can burn this whole building down. And they can do the same thing in your life. I'll show you what the Bible says about this. And I know, I know it's like, pastor, you, you look so cool, but you sound so old school. Thank you. It says, flee 
That means like run from sexual immorality. And that's like, whoa, what is that big church word? Like giving yourself away before a covenant before God in marriage. And, and this is why God's not trying to keep something from you. He's trying to save you from something. He says, every other sin that we commit is outside the body. Bitterness outside, unforgiveness outside, lashing out angers all outside. But, but this before marriage is a sin against our own body. Why? Because it's not just a cool wedding thing to say the two become one flesh. Something in your soul ties to another person in that act. And this is why some of you, when you went physical too early and then the relationship didn't make it, it felt like something was ripping inside you. It was. And for some of you, and this isn't meant to be condemning, You've been tied to one person after another, after another, after another, after another, on the soul level. And you've got to get healed from that. Let me say it this way. If I don't get healed from past pain, I'll hurt the people in front of me because of the people behind me. If I don't get healed from past pain, if I don't say, God, make me new, God, give me fresh start, here's what I believe, and I would encourage you to pray this, God, help me with the power of the Holy Spirit to even remove the images. I believe God can give you that kind of fresh start. God, help me to, I don't wanna ever compare that to what you have for me in the future. I don't wanna compare that sexual encounter to what you have for me. I believe in a godliness of marriage. God, I want, God, cleanse me all together. And you can stand on this promise right here. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from what? From all unrighteousness. He's a God of mercy and he's a God of grace and he's a God of kindness. And you're like, pastor, I've already blown it. Let me just tell you, he's faithful and just. If you just come to him and go, God, I haven't built it in the right order and I haven't built it in the right boundary and I got this burn mark here and I got this burn mark here and, and God, I've got this thing here and then my heart is hurting. He just goes, come to me, don't run away from me. I'm, I'm not a God looking to condemn you. I'm looking to draw you in. Just run to me because I've got some salve that can heal the burnt places in your life. I've got healing power for the broken areas of your life. I can restore, I can renew, and I can redeem. Do you know what it means when God redeems it? He makes it better than it was before. I'm just telling you, you don't have to walk around going, I just hope it can kind of improve. No, our God has a way of making better than it was before. Pastor, I didn't start the right way. Well, start now. Amen. Stop feeling shame over yesterday. Stop feeling guilt over yesterday. And let God start. The Bible says if anyone be in Christ, they're a brand new creation. All things pass away. Everything becomes new. He's a redeemer. He's a restorer. He is a healer. This doesn't make a great Disney movie. It doesn't make a great rom-com, but it does make a great life. The right order and the right boundary. Do you receive the word today? that helpful? Will you pray with me at every location, everyone joining us online, if you're able to, just where you are, bow your heads, close your eyes for a moment. Just wanna ask you two questions. What's God saying to you? And then what are you gonna do with it? What's he saying to you and what are you gonna do with it? If you're sitting here feeling, oh, I'm so shameful, condemned, that's not God. 
He's a God of new beginnings, fresh starts. Just set in your heart from this day forward. God, want to do it your way. Maybe the conversations you're going to have to have out of this. Conversations with God, conversations with others. But what's he saying to you and what are you going to do with it? For another group of you today is the day that you need to draw close to God and the Bible says he'll draw close to you. For some of you, you've had religion, but you've never entered into an authentic relationship with Jesus. The kind of relationship where you know him and he knows you and where you're confident that you have peace with God, that your sins are forgiven that you've experienced that transformation of a brand new beginning in him. And if you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, I know in my heart I'm far from God. Maybe it hasn't always been that way, but then this season you're like, I've just kind of walked away. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to take a step towards him today. By faith, the Bible says that we've all sinned. That's not a condemning statement. It's just the reality of humanity. And it says the wages of sin is death. That word death really means eternal separation from God. It's a spiritual death. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life and it's found in Jesus. Jesus has this beautiful gift he wants to give you and it's life, it's life to the full. If that's you today, the way you receive that is simply by faith. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And so if that's you today, you'd say, Pastor, I, I know I'm far from God. I don't wanna be, I need a fresh start today. I need a, a new beginning. And in just a moment, we're gonna pray together as a church, all together, out loud, for the benefit of those praying for the very first time. But I wanna know who I'm praying with at every campus, online, if, if you'd say, Pastor, that's me, I'm gonna count to three, would you just shoot your hand up? I'm not gonna come to you. No one's gonna point you out, wouldn't embarrass you for the world. But if you say, that's me, on three, you just shoot your hand up. That's your act of faith today. On three, one, two, three, you just shoot it up high. God bless you. God bless you, you can put it down. Church, at every campus, let's pray this together out loud for the benefit of those praying for the first time. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. Today I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you for a brand new beginning. In Jesus' name, everybody said a big amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate those who took that step today. Hey, we hope today's message spoke to your situation and was helpful to your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're posting new content every week. And also, if you'd like to partner with us financially, you can click the link below. You know, it's thanks to the generosity of people like you that we're able to meet the needs of people all over the world. So thank you for making a difference and helping deliver this message to the people that need it most. And thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you soon.